music in this video were licensed at audio.com and discount code SAVE70 will get your first year of Audio Pro for 59 bucks. Hey everyone, Natalie here. We've got Julia behind the camera, which is my phone right now. We've been playing around with some beverages that we'll be drinking over the next few weeks and the art on these cans is so beautiful. We thought we'd play around with some, I don't know, cinematography techniques, lighting, playing around with lighting, seeing how we can get this to look as gorgeous as possible. and. We are so happy with the final products. I thought it might be a good idea to share what we've done. And I think this might be a really good example of getting stuff done as well as you possibly can in camera. So I'll just take you through all the little things we've done and then kind of do a little replay of what we have been doing. So we've got the Nanlite Forza 500 with the parabolic softbox, 120 centimeter one. We've got that set to 22%. So how we have the shot right now with me filming you've got these down lights shining on me but those go off the curtains are all closed so the only light sources that we have on this can are the softbox light this 4 to 500 and then we've got some apertures that are causing some side lights over here we've got the aperture mcs i'll put the values on the screen right now and we've been playing with the hue on this back light over here and i'm going to show you what it looks like on the monitor julie do you want to come on over got the gh5 connected to a field world monitor the reason we had to do this was like we've got this kind of dangerous setup here i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend this i'm not sure we've got this if anything happens here my camera and my lens are in trouble but i'm pretty happy or comfortable with this entire setup because i've never had a problem with things falling but like i said i'm not sure i would recommend this gh5 we've got the lumix 12 to 60 the leica version and then the monitor. Okay, I did not explain the exact reasons the monitor was needed. Firstly, our roof is low and we were unable to set the NAN lights up for top-down lighting. But in hindsight, our revolving table should have been set lower to allow us to set up a top-down light softbox. But that would have made efficient spinning difficult. So this lighting setup had to do because this was the only room that we could dark out for complete control of lighting. And this meant Judah needed to stand in front of the camera on that side over there to hit record. And I needed to be able to see the the rotation so I could end the spinning at the correct point. So the camera's monitor would not have worked well for either one of us in this case and the monitor setup at this orientation made the entire process easier for both Julia and for myself. And what I'm going to do is we're going to put this camera phone onto a tripod now and kind of replay what we did. But before we do that, at the back here we've got this little piece of soft cardboard as the backdrop creates some space between the subject and the backdrop and this is a very beautiful addition that we had to create some lovely separation between the back and the can. And as I've been speaking, I've probably put a bunch of different examples of what we got done. But let's just do the run through Audio now. sync, click, click, click. Nice one. That was very, very I tough. think that's actually fine. Is it okay over there? Yeah, it's good to you. Okay, fix it. So what I've been having Julia do is she's been doing like all these little touches and stuff because she really has an eye for detail. So when it comes to just making sure everything's nice on the, on the monitor, Julia's been doing that. And I've kind of let her take over of like the little things that we need to get done. And you'll just see the process of what's been happening. Okay. All right, ready? And so what I do is I spin it manually, making sure to keep consistency. And now, see, I got that one wrong. I got that one wrong. And I'm not wearing my glasses, so I can't actually see the monitor right now. I'm gonna grab my glasses. Things never go right. Things never go perfectly right entirely. At least not for me and not yet. That's why doing things at home as much as you possibly can for stuff that you're interested in doing is really good. So you can get all those little rookie errors out of the way. So, but before Julia shouts, action so i've got the x marked on the monitor so i know that the logo is on the x just so that we can have started off on the x so that we've got a nice shot if we want to get a still shot out of this moving video all right Ready? Mm -hmm. okay so once she started action what i do is i go slightly the other way start it slightly the other way so that we can start it in motion and manual and I watch and I try end it roughly and then what we do is we end it off with a just grabbing it and whatever I didn't tell you was probably 
completed by a voiceover. And it was really fun as well. And you know, actually there's one other thing I forgot to tell you guys that we did. Before we started each and every shot, Julia would be looking at the monitor and I would literally just go like this. Make sure it's on the hue setting. There we go. And then Julia would look at the monitor while I scroll through. Is it working? Yeah, it is working. It's on green now. So I'd literally scroll through all the colors and then Julia would choose one that looks the best. That looks cool. And a couple of things that I forgot to mention include the setup. This is a very cheap little cake decorating spinner that I found at a shop. It's very flimsy, it's not particularly stable, but I bought it on the day that we were doing the shooting and I thought it would do fine as a starting little spinning thing. I'm not 100% happy with the results that we got, but I think it's a fantastic start and there's definitely a lot that we could get done with this, especially considering that this top piece that I put on here was a piece of plastic we taped on not at all stable and this is actually the reason that the cans were wobbly not necessarily this cake spinner but i think the two going together resulted in an unstable result and there's nothing wrong with that it was just for practice and then i had this little bit of velvety cover thingy that went on top to make it look just a little nicer. Another thing that I did not mention in the video was I work in a 25 frame per second timeline and for the shooting of this, we did it at 50 frames per second so that we had the option to slow down our rotation by 50%. And last but not least, the music in this video, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, was found at audio.com who are running a sale or promo and I put all those details somewhere in the description. Do keep in mind that that is an affiliate link so if you do make a purchase through them, I get a cut from their end. And I I think that's it for this video folks thanks so much for stopping by a very very last little sneaky little peek for next week's video or the next video i don't know when i'm gonna post it probably next week i'm busy shooting this part with this brand new old vintage lens that i found at a market for the equivalent of not even five pounds and i'm testing it out and though it is quite quirky i am loving the results so i'm very much looking forward to sharing the process of getting that thing cleaned and then fitting it onto my digital camera and the little things that i'm figuring out as i go along i'm very excited for that video so if you're interested do stay tuned as always thank you so much for stopping by and i'll catch you in the next video 